Hi, today we're going to make this little bunny. Let's put the earthenware clay. First I'm going to take my little fish line cutter here, slice some clay down, and we'll start with the abdomen, the little tummy here. Okay, and again, that is like a little pinch pot. And I'll roll this out or smack it out a little round in my hands. Don't spend too much time smacking it or it'll dry out and cause extra cracks when you're creating. And I'm going to take my thumb, stick it up inside and press it and smooth it and draw my thumb across the inside while pressing my hand against it towards my thumb. That smooths and thins the wall so that it's nice and even and less likely to blow up in the kiln. Anytime you leave it too thick, and don't thin it out, there could be air bubbles trapped inside the wall of clay and that would blow up in the kiln. So now I'm just putzing, I'm kind of like just manipulating it and feeling it to see where it might be too thick and make sure that it's nice and even all the way around. See how thin that is on the inside there? Nice and consistently pinched and clean and thin. So then I'm going to take my finger, I love a tummy on a bunny. So I love to take my fingers, put it up inside, and then push out an extra little curve, a little paunch right there. And then to exaggerate it, I'll take a simple pencil and draw the line all the way around, huh? just to exaggerate his tummy. Before I put on a head, I want to make sure there's a hole inside between where the shoulders would be because that will allow any air to pass from the head down into and out the bottom of the tummy. So now I will take some clay and make the little roundish head. Size it up, make sure it looks about right. Roll it kind of round and then take anything rigid the end of a pencil and stick it in because if you stick your finger in sometimes you ex expand the size too big so if you take the end of a pencil and put it in there that's going to hollow it out nicely and evenly and not overextend and exaggerate the shape so what I also like to do is I like to when I'm making a bunny or a kitty or a puppy I like to use my thumbs to press in what would be kind of like the eye sockets, you know, just a little indentation where the eyes belong. Okay, and then that actually helps to shape the snout. If you can see that slight subtle profile there, the snout comes out ever so slightly. So then kind of size it up make sure that it's going to look good. And once I like it, then I'm going to scratch and wet. I've got some water in my sink right there, so I'm gonna take my little homemade paper clip wire brush to scratch and wet it together. You have to add drips of water while scratching it. That really makes a nice strong connection and crisscross and scratch every which direction to make it work the best. And then we'll press this on nice and gently, not distorting it when we press it on, but see how I'm kind of nudging it from side to side? There, see, that's a good secure attachment. If you can pick it up from the part you just attached, you know you've attached it well. So now what I like to do, when I'm doing eyeballs, I'll take a pencil tip and I'll just put, doop, two little holes in there and that's where the eyeballs are going to go so the eyeballs are going to be so so tiny super super tiny just to go in there blah, with my dirty little fingers make them and hopefully they're the same size let's see not too bad nope one's bigger than the other so I'm going to add a tiny tiny bit to one of them Now I'm happy with that. 
So I'll take the needle tool and add a little bit of water. So because I can't get my little wire brush in there, I'm just taking the needle and putting a tiny bit of water. Now watch this. I'm going to poke the eyeball with the needle and plunk it right in where I scratched and wet. And then I'll do the same to the other one. Get a little tiny bit of water on the end of the needle tool. Kind of scratch it in there and let that water drip down in there and watch. Poke. And let that eyeball go right into that socket. Okay, so I'm going to use a very similar method when I do the nose. Making a super tiny triangle with my fingertips. So tiny that you can hardly even see. Is that really a tiny triangle? But yeah, it is. So what I did is I pinched like that and like that. And you see how that forms a tiny triangle. So again, adding water to the end of my needle tool. Hashtag paper, paper uh, clip on the end of a pencil and poke it to hold on to it and gently, gently, gently pat it into position. So tiny, but there it is. And then I can even take this pencil tip and erase those tiny little extra marks that, that, that it left before. And if you're little and you have littler fingers, you can do some nice finessing, cleaning as you go with your gentle little fingertips. So now he needs little ears. Take a pinch of clay. I roll it around and around first, and then I go back and forth from side to side. Do you see how that tapers the ends? Flatten it a tiny bit. And then use a pencil tip to draw the little line in the middle. You see that? That seems excessively long, doesn't it? So I'm going to cut some of that off. And that makes me feel a little better. So I'll grab some more clay, roll it around and around, and then back and forth, but tapering over the ends again. Flatten it a tiny bit. Use my pencil to draw that little line size them up next to each other and again make that cut so that looks like bunny ears doesn't it so that'll work so i'll get my little wire brush with some water on it I just happen to be next to my kitchen sink and there happens to be water in there, so I am set with water. But if you were doing this at home and you weren't right next to your kitchen sink, just dip your wire brush into a lid. I usually just use a plastic lid with a few drips of water in it. That will work as well. So how's it looking so far? Touch that up a tiny bit. And then the arms are made with Again, start out with a round ball. When I make it round, I'm smoothing in all the uneven edges. That's why I do that. And then go back and forth. And look at how nice and even it is. There's hardly anything to smooth out. So that's why I roll it round. I, almost everything I put in my hands, I start out by rolling it round. And then make the little lines for, not fingers, but part of his paw, I guess. Oh, so cute. And then another one. We want it to be about the same size. Roll it around so that we put those, get rid of those creases nicely. And then back and forth a little bit. Now we size them up. Yep, that looks similar. And then again with the paper clip end, just make little marks. No. And then you decide which way you want his hands. Is he just kind of holding his tummy? Is he going to be up and kind of waving? You get to decide. Oh, should there be a little tilt, a slight tilt to the head? Again, you get to decide how you want your bunny to be and what expression they have. And again, scratch and wet those arms on. If you move too fast, sometimes you put lines where you don't want them and then just take your finger and gently, gently 
smooth over that line. Don't be rough because you'll end up putting more imprints and marks that need to be erased. I think I like him holding his tummy. Here we go. Okay. Hang on. The feet. The feet are a little bigger. Around. And then I go back and forth and I kind of crease not crease. I just kind of close in my hands into this V shape while I roll back and forth. And it looks a little odd and it's not very realistic. It's a little more cartoony. But then I'm going to cut the toes and smooth out those edges, defining the toes, not making it look like it was just cut from a slab of rigid clay. I'm separating the toes because I think it's so cute to do that. And then two, I like to use the end of a tool. This just happens to be a paintbrush that's in my area. So look at that. I'm using the end of this paintbrush to make the little toenails. Isn't that fun? Give that extra little mark. And that's really big, but funny and cute. So here we go, we'll make another one. I'm gonna size it up and make sure I've got about the same amount of clay. Around and around, then V my hands, press it gently. Yep, that's looking about the right size. Take my little paper clip here, slice my toes. Smooth those edges out. It's something that some people tend to forget. It's like if you make a cut clean up after you did. There we go. Here's the end of the paintbrush handle. Making the little toenail, the toenail bed I guess it is. That's huge. <laughs> so that's a little silly, isn't it? And if it's too silly, you get to decide to make it a little smaller. That's the cool thing about creating on your own. I love his toe being up, kind of like he's a little like perplexed about something. Um, if you want him to be smaller and more sophisticated looking, you sure can. Or more realistic looking. Again, that's your option. There we go. And the other one, it fell right off, so it's obvious I didn't scratch and wet it yet. Just gonna do it like that. Air like that. That's the cool thing about clay too. You can like change your mind halfway through and oh yeah I do want him to wave. Well no I don't. You know it's um, so forgiving. Love that about clay. And now I'm going to make the little powder puff tail on the back. And if you want you can even add fur. Rough it up. Make it kind of scruffy. There we go. Kind of like he gets into trouble. I don't know why. There we go. Scratch and wet that on, and scratch and wet the hinder, and put that on there. Yeah, and again, if you can pick them up and everything stays in place, you've attached them well. And if it didn't stay in place, reinforce, re-scratch and wet. Okay, there you go. Well, if you like this demonstration, just click the link below and then you can make a contribution. Thanks.